Hello, in this video, I'd like to show you a series of tricks to create a beautiful wireframe render and improve some of your basic rendering settings that you may have that are not turned on by default here inside of 3ds Max. Now, when you go to render your scene as it is right now, you may be looking at this kind of sad, small, uh, black background image that you have here. And I'm gonna show you a few ways that you could spice this up, as well as create a wireframe render in case you wanna show off your topology uh, very easily here inside of 3ds Max. So uh, a couple things I wanna do, first of all, is if I press M on the keyboard to bring up the material browser, you may be looking at this slate material editor. Uh, this is great if you wanna create some you know, complex, customized materials for things like ArchViz or product rendering or film. Uh, but what we're doing is more focused on games. So w our biggest goal is to you know create renders in 3D that they're functional and then get this stuff into the game engine. So we don't need to create these you know hyper complex shaders into your uh, day to day. I'm gonna click on the compact material editor and this is kind of the old school material editor that we have here. And as you can see, we've got a lot of this physical material, uh, PBR stuff. Again, not super applicable to games you know here in 3ds max we want to render our normal maps we want to bake our maps and, and get our asset into the game engine so instead of using this physical base material what i'm going to do is i'm going to clicking on this uh, teapot with the gear icon and you'll notice our our render is set to arnold so let's click on arnold and we're going to set this to scan line the scan line render will be the traditional method that we can use for our normal map baking and another map baking instead. Uh, but you'll notice a couple things while we're in this window. Uh, if I if I come back over here, I'll switch this physical material back to standard, and you can see it right here under the scan line options. So let's click on that, and this will create a traditional. Uh, scan line material. So we want to do a couple of things. We want to adjust some settings and the render itself as well as the material. So so first here in the material, I'm going to take my diffuse and I'm going to lightly darken it just a tad here. I'm going to press OK. And under our specular, I'll set this to 80. And under glossy, I'll set that to about 30. I'll press Control A and select all and assign that material to the object. Now you'll notice that if you look at your, your prop and you rotate it around, you should see this nice little bit of a sheen on it. We don't want to make it hyper, hyper, you know, plasticky uh, because then the specular roll off is not really something that you're going to see much of. So a nice little bit of a spread, you know, between 30 and 40 is usually pretty good for what we want. And similarly, the specular level, uh, you know, you probably don't want it to look like it's uh, wet or, uh, you know, super reflective. So around 80 is a good value that I like to use here. And then if you want to take a little bit of creativity here in your specular, you can add a little bit of color to it. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit of a blue or a little bit of an orange. Uh, let's add just a little bit to it. Very, very optional, uh, you know, but something that might give it a little bit more uh, zing when you show it off. So now if we render this out, you'll see, okay, we've got a, we've got a little bit of our specular value uh, and a little bit of our, our, our color showing up here. Um, but it's still, you know, it's, it's a little small and, you know, that black background is something we want to get rid of. Uh, so if I press 8 on the keyboard, the number 8, here under our, our background color, I'll click on where it says the color. And I'll set this to a little darker than middle of the midway. You know, like 128 is right about in the middle. I don't like it to be any brighter than that. So a little bit back would be a little bit more preferred. Go ahead and press OK. And we can close out our environment effects. And here under renderer, uh, typically what's going to happen when you when you first switch over to the scanline renderer, you'll notice that your image size is very, very small. It may only be like 800 by 600. Um, and you can adjust with some of these presets, but these are always way too small for showing off your work. You're going to want, you know, 1500 to 2000 minimum, you know, with today's you know screen sizes and monitors at 3K and 4K, everybody's on a larger image size or rather, rather a screen size. So the, uh, you know, these small, tiny little puny images are not going to be sufficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually over here in the uh, viewport is I'm going to press shift and F, F for Fox. And you'll see this yellow box that kind of reappears over our screen. And what this is, is this is the framing tool that can help you sort of identify like what scale or ratio you need this to be. So if I want to make my uh, my width, you know, more like 1200, you'll notice that the box, the frame is has kind of um, uh, rescaled and re-isolated re-isolated the object and now if i render it you'll notice it's going to be at the exact same ratio and so that shift f tool is really really helpful 
to kind of visualize like how the image is going to be framed, but you may still want it to be a little bit bigger. So what I'll do is I'll keep that same ratio by clicking on this uh, little lock icon and then maybe make it even bigger, maybe like 1600 by 800 or 1800 by 900 or you know anything along those lines where when we when we render this out we get this nice big uh, render size and you can always kind of close this and reframe it just a little bit more uh, to get everything nice and centered and when you're happy with it uh, you'll 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 drop that in so but lastly the thing I want to do is I want to do a wireframe render so let's imagine you know your boss comes in and says hey you know I need to check your topology I want to know what your wireframe uh, is looking like how your topology is so in order to do this it's it's actually fairly simple what I'll do is I'll press control a I'm gonna press control V on the keyboard V as in copy paste I'm gonna use everything as a copy here. Press okay. And then immediately, don't click on anything else. You wanna make sure that you have that copy of everything saved. We're gonna go up here to the wrench icon under utilities, and I'm gonna click on the word collapse. And when I hit collapse, that'll merge everything into a new mesh. Now don't worry if your topology looks all scary uh, because we won't actually be using that mesh for anything other than a wireframe. So if we press M again to bring up our material browser with that uh, collapsed mesh selected, we're gonna make a new material. We're gonna switch this back to standard and under right here at the top where it says wire, we're gonna turn that on. We're gonna set our wire color, whether you want it to be white or black or yellow or any color you want. We're gonna press okay. And we're gonna assign that wire color to your uh, your mesh. Now remember, you're doing this on the mesh that was collapsed and put together. So um, if you move it around, you should see this kind of weird, crazy uh, mesh floating over the top of it. But you know, make sure you undo and put it back to where it was. So now if we render, we should see both our original mesh and our wireframe mesh and, and see the both of them side by side. Well, not side by side, but actually right on top of one another, which is what we want. Now with the material browser back open, if we press M and bring that back up, there's a quick setting that we can actually do. Uh, let's, let's bring this open here. And in the wire, you can go down to the uh, extended parameters and you can actually increase or decrease the size of the wire. So if you wanted it to be like 0.5 or a little bit thinner uh, or a little bit thicker by like 1.5, you can adjust those settings here. And as you render them, you'll see the thicker or the thinner wireframe. Now you notice that in some parts, like up here in the top right, I can see that it's not quite showing correctly. It's a little bit off. Occasionally what can happen is, is your wireframe won't always be 100% correct right on top of the mesh. So what I like to do is, is with that wireframe mesh selected, is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to actually do a very, very tiny push modifier. So I'm going to put a push P-U-S-H modifier. And under the push values, I'm gonna set this very, very small, you know, 0 0.05 or something even smaller than that, 0 0.02. And this will just slightly move those uh, vertices out just a little bit more with that wireframe. And so now if we render this out, you should see all of that topology. If we wanna make our render even bigger, just go ahead and click on this uh, gear icon with the teapot. We've got our ratio saved. So we know if we go up to 2000 pixels or 2200 pixels, um, the ratio is gonna stay the same. And, and if we do adjust those, the, the yellow border box is gonna adjust because of our safe frame. So for example, if I turn this off and I say, well, let's go you know, 1200, you'll notice the yellow frame is getting a little bit bigger or smaller. So it'll adjust as you change this. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this. Nice big giant render with wireframe turned on. And there you go. Now you can save this out and you can share this with all your friends and, uh, and, and send it to your boss and get that beautiful wireframe render, um, you know, in order to get feedback or, you know, improvements on your topology. So hopefully this has been helpful and thanks for watching.